Hey and welcome back. It's really early in the morning and it's the day after I've posted the um, film I did on Randlesham and a couple of days since the film I posted on the um, coronavirus. And you and I need to sit down and have a serious talk. So, let's just get a few things straight about me, about the channel and about science. I'm not a professor. I've spent my life telling science stories to the public, interpreting what scientists have researched and making them accessible to viewers. That is what I'm good at. What I'm trying to do with this channel is cut through the crap and try and bring to you not the myth, not the legend, but try and tell you some of the basic science that is out there. And the thing about science, as opposed to religion, is that science gets it wrong. And when new data comes in, they're very happy to change their story. So many people have said to me, you know, when I've posted an early video and then I've posted an update, hey, professor, last time you said this and now you're saying that, what's going on? That's the scientific process at work. So let's get down to it and actually discuss what's been going on in the comment section of this channel in the last 24 hours. I'm truly dismayed and disappointed by some of the idiotic, racist and just downright stupid comments people are making. Now, not all of them. There's obviously some extremely bright people out there who understand the process, but I need to clear a few things up before I turn the comments off. The idea is to have a forum to debate things, but saying aliens and Bill Gates made the virus isn't a debate. All you're doing is repeating garbage. Let's cover the coronavirus first. I hate the name coronavirus. It's complete sloppy media simplification. So the coronavirus is a group or a type of viruses that just describe its, its shape. The flu virus, the common cold virus, they're all coronaviruses. They're round and they have pointy bits coming out of them. The virus that has emerged, and I'll discuss that in a minute, out of Wuhan in China, is a corona type, but it's not the coronavirus. It's a variant, and that's very important. I have no idea where you've got this information from because it seems to be out there generally. And I've just got so many comments saying, Bill Gates made the virus. Uh, no, no, hang on, just stop that. <laughs> Bill Gates might have invested in a pharmaceutical company. I, I have no idea. But Bill Gates did not make the coronavirus and he certainly did not make the Wuhan variation of this corona type virus. The thing that's making us ill is because this virus is new. It's a variation and the human body can't cope with it. Viruses are pretty simple. They actually don't give you any problems. It's just the number of them inside your body which messes you up. I think I said in my previous film on viruses, a few hundred viruses living inside our body, no trouble. But billions of them, they get in the way. I mean, that is how they make you sick. They are opportunistic creatures that reproduce, mutate, almost all the time and look for niche little areas that they can survive in to have babies. It's just a life form, but you don't want millions of them inside your body. And that's what's going on with this new virus. All right, so the virus came from the Wuhan Chemical Weapons Research Station. Well, they're terrible if that's the case. The Wuhan variation of the corona group of viruses 
statistically at present is only affecting 3% of the population in any serious way. And those are vulnerable people who have respiratory problems that are sadly dying because their bodies are being overwhelmed by the virus. The majority of people that get coronavirus, and I swear you've had a coronavirus, I swear you've got coronavirus inside you now, because you've probably had the common cold, a coronavirus type. And you didn't die, I hope. That's, I guess, why you're writing the comment. But the Wuhan variation is serious because it's a new virus that the human body has to learn to cope with. And I was slightly wrong in saying there is no kind of treatment. Well, that's kind of true. I mean, but... There is a flu vaccine, and hang on, hang on, I've just said it, vaccine. The whole point of a vaccine is it takes the nasty guy, kills it, puts it inside our body. We then learn how to cope with it, our antibodies, learn how to cope with the dead thing that is being put inside you. And when the live one comes, our bodies can cope with it. Well, with a new emerging, quickly emerging virus like this Wuhan variation, our bodies can't cope. So restricting travel from an infected area or quarantine is the only method really to stop it spreading. But we are such international travelers that I worry that it will grow, but I don't really think, and oh, I don't like to say this, but I don't really think it is a deadly pandemic. And Bill Gates didn't make it. And it's very unlikely that it came from the world's worst weapon factory. And another thing, as they say. <laughs> and another thing. Rendlesham. For sake. I'm really not uh, happy with most of the comments. All right. I just want you to step back and listen to what the majority of people are saying. Not everyone. Some very interesting comments. First of all, a really good comment confirming that the space rescue people were based at Woodford. Top research, Simon. They did have an extremely long World War II diversion airfield. They also claimed that it was a shuttle diversion field for the military version of the shuttle. Good research. And that Apollo era command module was a test vehicle that the people at Woodford would have recovered. So, okay, so I stand by that. But it seems that a lot of people don't believe it. All right, it might be slightly wrong. <coughs> it might not be the full story, but let's analyze what a lot of people are saying really happened. All right, <laughs> you asked for this. So you're claiming that an alien species, let's assume that they are coming from a planet that's circulating a sun, orbiting a sun somewhere in our own galaxy. Okay. <coughs> Do you know how far away the nearest kind of habitable planet is from Earth? Check it out. I mean, the technology that an alien would need to travel from the nearest, and the chances of them living there is slight, but any planet orbiting a star in our own galaxy is millions and millions of miles away. So these people, these aliens are extremely smart. No, 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 no. They come in an aluminum aircraft with flashing lights that we can see in our human uh, spectrum of vision, very unlikely. And they come to Woodbridge, Rendlesham Forest in Suffolk, which is in the southeast counties of the United Kingdom, and freak out some US servicemen and on their craft are strange hieroglyphs that look uncannily like something from Egyptian culture. Yeah, okay. And this is the one that really gets me. And when the commander touches the craft, 
it downloads binary code into his brain. Right, stop, 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 stop. So our greatest family friend was one of the inventors of binary code. He, a human, invented binary code as a scientific and very economic way of counting large numbers. It was not invented by aliens. Okay, right. So the binary code is downloaded into this US Air Force man's brain that gives him, hang on, latitude and longitude numbers of where they came from. Oh, the aliens by Ordnance Survey effing maps. You know, the film that I should really be making is why do people believe? Why do people want to believe in aliens? Why do they want to believe that their government hates them? Why can't my camera focus? <laughs> I'm sorry, this is really early. You know, what is really going on in the world? I think there's an emptiness. And I think science has let people down. I think uh, we haven't really explained how science works. I certainly think education is sadly lacking. And I absolutely know for a fact that broadcast media and newspaper media is pretty terrible in places and doesn't like to communicate real stories. Please stick around for intriguing and new takes on stories that cut through bullshit. That's what I'm bringing to you. And I am humble enough to say, I will get it wrong. And when I get it wrong, and when you send me new information, I go, oh, that's good info. I will change what I'm saying and update the story because the truth is out there.